Hi, welcome to this video. Once again, with reference to the previous video, so let us go for the various uh, therapeutic equipments. In this video, we are going to discuss the ventilators. Before going to see the ventilators, let us go for the why we need the ventilators. So whenever the patient needs the artificial in ventilation and it is to be maintained for a long time this kind of ventilators is preferred so the ventilators are uh, mainly used during the anesthesia condition also and are designed to uh, match the human breathing waveform or some other patterns so these are the very uh, very sophisticated equipments with a large number of controls and it is maintaining um, proper and regulating the only for breathing activity and usually these kind of ventilators are classified into positive or negative ventilators. So the main function of these ventilators is to ventilate the lungs in a manner so close to natural respiration. So the natural inspiration is a result of negative pressure in the pleural cavity generated by the movement of uh, diaphragm. So ventilators were initially designed to create the same effect. So these ventilators are called the negative pressure ventilators. So in the uh, negative pressure, the flow of air to the lungs is facilitated by generating a negative pressure around the patient thoracic cage. So the negative pressure moves the thoracic walls outward, expanding the intrathoracic volume and dropping the pressure inside the lungs, resulting in a pressure gradient between atmosphere and the lungs, which causes the flow of atmospheric air into the lungs. So the inspiratory and expiratory phases of the respiration are controlled by the cycling the pressure inside the body chamber. So th this negative pressure ventilator are not preferred due to some technical reasons. So when you go for the positive pressure ventilator, so this is the block diagram of this positive pressure ventilator and this inspiratory flow by applying a positive pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure to the airways. So uh, during the inspiration, the inspiratory during the inspiration, the inspiratory flow delivery system creates the positive pressure in the patient circuit and the exhalation control system closes the outlet wall to the atmosphere. Whereas uh, during the expiratory uh, uh, phase, the inspiratory uh, flow delivery system stops the positive pressure of the exhalation system and opens the wall to the exhaled air to the atmosphere. So this positive pressure ventilators have been found to quite successful in treating the patient. So based on the analysis of ventilators uh, discussion, so some of the terms, the technical terms related to ventilators are uh, discussed here. First one is airway resistance. So airway resistance relates to the ease with which air flows through the tubular respiratory structures. So the higher the resistance occurs in the smaller tubes such as the bronchioles and alveoli that have emptied properly. Okay. When you go for mean airway pressure, an integral taken over one complete cycle expresses the mean airway pressure. So this is the mean airway pressure. Okay. And next coming to inspiratory pause time, when the pressure in the patient circuit and alveoli is equal, so there is a period of no flow. So this is a pause time. So this period is called inspiratory pause time. Next when you go for inspiratory flow, uh, that is uh, uh, inspiratory flow it is represented as a positive flow whereas expiratory flow is nothing but negative flow. Next go for the tidal volume. So the tidal volume is a depth of breathing or the volume of gas inspired or expired during the uh, each respiratory cycle. It can be calculated by multiplying the flow rate and uh, setting by the set inspiratory in terms of seconds. Next when you go for the respiration rate. So this is the number of breath per second and it represents the total respiratory rate of the patient. Finally we can go for the sigh volume. So one sigh breath is 150% of the set tidal volume. So based on this tidal volume we can go for the sigh volume. So this kind of ventilators are classified uh, by means of various methods. So based on the method on inspiration phase uh, this can be uh, discussed based on controller 
assistor and combined one let us go for the first controller so the ventilator which operates independent of the patient's inspiratory effort so the inspiration is initiated by a mechanism which is controlled with respect to the time pressure or another similar factor so this controlled ventilation is required for patients who are unable to breathe on their own next coming to uh, assistor Uh, so the ventilator which augments the inspiration of the patient by operating the response uh, to the patient's inspiratory effort that is a pressure sensor detects the slight negative pressure that occurs each time the patient attempts to inhale and triggers the process of inflating the lungs so thus the ventilator helps the patient to inspire whenever it is needed whereas when you go for the combined that is a ventilator which combines both the controller and assistor functions next based on the power transmission so that is a, a direct power transmission and indirect power transmission so this one is a power a direct transmission this one is our indirect transmission so what is a direct power mean ventilator which delivers the gas directly from the source of uh, compressed gas to the patient whereas indirect means ventilator which has a separate patient and power systems so the pressure in the power system determines the flow rate next classification based on cycling control so the cycling control of a ventilator is a device which determines a change from the inspiratory phase to the expiratory phase and vice versa so coming to inspiration to expiration it is discussed based on volume cycle pressure cycle and time cycle when you go for volume cycle a ventilator which starts the expiratory phase after a preset tidal volume has been delivered into the patient circuit this device normally a pressure override valve so that if the machine is in process administering the set volume and if the pressure exceeds a predetermined maximum value so ventilator will cycle whether or not the appropriate volume has been administered when you go for next one pressure cycle ventilator which begins the expiratory phase after a preset pressure has been attained Uh, finally time cycle ventilator which initiates the expiratory phase after a preset time period for the inspiratory phase has been paused and based on expiration to inspiration once again it is analyzed the three factors pressure cycle uh, time cycle and patient inspiratory effort cycle in the first one ventilator which begins the inspiratory inspiratory phase after a preset end expiratory pressure has been attained and with respect to time a ventilator which initiates the inspiratory phase after a preset time period for the expiratory phase has been paused finally a ventilator which starts the inspiratory phase in response to the inspiratory effort so uh, the classific uh, the ventilators are used based on the classification this classification once again class uh, discussed based on from expiration to inspiration or inspiration to expiration okay next uh, based on the source of power that is uh, pneumatic and the electric so uh, pneumatic means a ventilator powered by the compressor gas whereas electric means the ventilator powered by an electrical device such as electric motor or similar gadget Uh, so uh, next in the ventilator uh, there are uh, several terms already we have discussed so the pressure volume diagram is uh, discussed in this part so it it is it may be observed that it is necessary to provide for a long time that is a pause time uh, between the cycling of the ventilator and the change from inspiratory flow to the expiratory flow in the airway so during this pause time what happened means the flow becomes zero when the alveolar pressure equals the airway pressure and the constant volume is maintained <coughs> in the lungs so the ventilator producing a pause time during the inspiration or expiration have the some certain advantages over the ventilator without such a pause time so this is a pause time without pause time and this is a with pause time pressure flow diagram so this is a pressure flow diagram with pause time and without pause time now let's let us move on to the modern ventilators that is with respect to the uh, by using a microprocessor we can go for the uh, ventilator applications so in this uh, the modern ventilators uh, consists of two separate but interconnected systems one is a pneumatic uh, flow system another one is a electronic uh, flow system so in the pneumatic flow system the ox uh, flow gas uh, flow of gas through the ventilator 
it enables that is pneumatic flow system enables the flow of gas through the ventilator oxygen and medical grade air enter the ventilator at that is this oxygen and medical air enters the ventilator at 3.5 bar pressure through the built in 0.1 micron filters so the normal operating range is 2 to 6 bar or 28 to 86 psi so these gases enter the air oxygen mixer when they are combined at the required percentage and reduce the pressure to 350 centimeter h2o once again it is sent to the large reservoir tank which holds about 8 liters of mixed gases and it is compressed so the electronically controlled flow wall proportion the gas flow from the reservoir tank to the patient breathing circuit so in some of the ventilators the air compressor is a used place of a compressor air tank when you go for the electronic control system it may be used for one or more microprocessors and the software to perform the monitoring and control functions these parameters are includes the respiration rate flow waveform tidal volume oxygen con concentration of the delivered breath peak flow and uh, the peep this one so the peep selected in the mandatory mode is only used for control of exhalation flow so the microprocessor utilizes the above parameters to compute and uh, uh, desired inspiratory flow trajectory so the system overall system consists of monitors for pressure flow and oxygen fractions finally we have a humidifier uh, inhalator and nebulizer and these are all the once again therapeutic equipments uh, why we need the humidifiers so apart from the ventilation this humidification of the breathing gas plays a very important role in the in I ic unit so the main task of the humidifier is to replace the humidity in the upper air passages which has been lost by intubation so the in humidity should be as close to 100 percent as possible or uh, speaking in terms of water the absolute content per liter uh, that is breathing gas should be more than 30 mg regardless of the environmental condition this is very important one therefore in order to prevent the damage to the patient lungs the air or oxygen applied during the respiratory therapy must be humidified that's why we can go for the humidifier in the IC unit next we can go for the nebulizer that is when water or some type of medication suspended in the inspired air as an aerosol is to the to be administered to the patient so this device is mostly preferred in this device the water or medication is picked up by a high velocity jet of air and made to impact against one or more baffles to break the substance into controlled size droplets which are then applied to the patient via the respirator more effective and uh, that is efficient nebulizers are based on the use of high intensity ultrasound energy which vibrates the substance uh, to produce a high volume of minute particles so ultrasound is mainly used to produce an efficient output when you go for uh, inhalator most of the patients when you need the that is uh, this kind of uh, inhalation that is uh, medical uh, value of uh, air these kind of inhalators are used so these are the reference of this uh, therapeutic equipments. Thank you.